Hi, and welcome to Poltex Tech Lightning, where I ignite your passion for all things in Azure. Today, we're diving into this exciting world of making applications cloud ready. But hold on, it's not just about moving your app to the cloud, it's about doing it in the right way. So in this video, we'll explore 10 essential application design principles that will make your journey to Azure seamless and successful. Whether you're a seasoned developer or just getting started, understanding these principles is actually key to unlocking the full potential that you can use in Azure. So let's buckle up and embark on this enlightening journey together. Here we go. Making an application ready for Azure is exciting. Like everything else in life, it has to be planned properly if it has to be done in a good way. So these 10 application design principles will help you along the way. I will list them out and then we will dive into each one, how we can approach them and solve it in Azure. First one, we have design applications for healing. This handles how to handle failures and the different self-healing options. Secondly, make sure to make things redundant. Avoid single points of failure. Three, minimize coordination. Minimize coordination between application services to achieve a better scalability. Number four, design to scale out. Enable your application to scale out horizontally, specifically based on demand. Number five, partition around limits. Use partitioning to work around limitations in, for example, databases, networking, and compute resources. Number six, design for operations. Ensure that the operations team had the tools they need to properly support the application. Number seven, use managed services. When possible, use platform as a services, PaaS, instead of IaaS, virtual machines. Number eight, use an existing identity service, such as, for example, Microsoft Entra, instead of building your own. Number nine, design for evolution. All applications change over time. Make sure the application design allows for continuous innovation. Number 10, build the needs according to the business. Every design decision must be justified by a business requirement. Let us now dive into each one of them to see how we can handle them in Azure. The first one, uh, design for healing, is all about failures that can happen. Failures can be, for example, in the underlying Azure hardware. Uh, they can fail an availability zone or a whole Azure region may experience a disruption. Major outages, such as entire regional, regional outages, are, are very rare, but they can definitely occur. However, a focus should also be on local short-lived failures, such as when a network connectivity temporarily fails. There are a couple of key points uh, that you can do to handle this. For example, in an application configure it to retry failed operations, which is, in my opinion, actually the most important one. Whenever there is a momentary loss of, for example, connectivity, or there can be a timeout, the application needs to have logic to retry. Try to isolate critical resources. Uh, the terminology there in application, we call it bulkhead. Failures in one subsystem can cascade and lead to resource exhaustion in other areas. So you need to partition a system into isolated groups. So only the specific group and part of that application fails and doesn't affect all the other ones. Another item which is important, perform load leveling. Ensure that sudden spikes in traffic do not overwhelm the backend. Use a queue system for work item to smooth out that peak load. Moving on, a failover. Consider stateless applications. They allow easier failover. Consider degrade functionality. In case you can't work around the problem, consider perhaps to reduce the functionality. Maybe you can only allow mission critical functionality of the applications while the other ones are disabled. And in such a way, you can avoid the huge impact. Another one is use availability zone. 
you can provision similar resources in the same availability zone in order to reduce latency. However, in addition to this, you can also use availability zones as a mean to fail over to another data center. We are now moving on uh, to the second one, which is to make things redundant. Before making things redundant, uh, the recovery time objective, RTO, and recovery point objective, RPO, they have to be defined. What is the actual business impact of the outage? What is the maximum amount of time that data can be lost? Redundancy always comes at a cost. And if there's no clear direction from the business, I always recommend to design at least for zone redundancy. Add regional redundancy in case there's a clear and legitimate business requirement. Place VMs behind a load balancer, which in that case you avoid a single point of failure. Replicate databases, for example Azure SQL database and Azure Cosmos database automatically replicate within a region. You can also enable cross-region replication easily to the paired region. Azure Traffic Manager is a good option for multi-region solution. Last to mention in this step is to always review the SLA by Microsoft. Azure Traffic Manager introduces maybe another point of failure, which means the SLA of all the components are the key. Moving further along to the third point, which is the minimize coordination. Most cloud applications, they consist of multiple application services, such as web frontends, databases, business processes, reporting, and more. To achieve scalability, each of these services should run on multiple instances. If you have two nodes who needs to update a database table, consideration has to be taken as to how this is handled. Is there a lock when the first node updates the table? Scaling the nodes horizontally by adding extra nodes may not provide the expected benefits if updating the tables are locked by a node. This goes into a little bit on our fourth point, designed to scale out. The power of the cloud is the elasticity where you can scale based on demand. Here you should avoid stickiness, meaning that the request from the client should not always be routed to the same server. This way you can more easily scale horizontally and have more servers handle the client load. So that's actually where I recommend to use the built-in Azure auto scaling features where they're available not only for scale out, but also for scale in. Keep in mind that it's also important to continuously identify bottlenecks. Scaling out may not be a magic bullet fix to all the issues in case there's a backend database, which is actually the bottleneck. That brings us to point number five, partition around limits. All services in the cloud have limits and specifically for Azure, always review the sub subscription limits, quotas, and constraints. I have personally seen customers hit with subscription limits, even if they have created a dedicated subscription just for the specific application to use. Keep in mind that there are also many other ways to partition a system. With these two that I will mention now, I feel that they are the most important ones. Partition databases to avoid limits on database size, data I.O., or the concurrent number of sessions. Secondly, partition an app service web app to avoid limits on the number of instances per app service plan. Consider having a database server deployed on a VM. The VM has a VHD disk that is backed uh, or using the Azure storage. The storage account belongs to an Azure subscription. Notice that each step in the hierarchy, each and every step has limit. The database server may have a connection pool limit. VMs have CPU and network limits. Storage have IOPS limits. The subscription then has limits on the number of virtual machine cores that can be spun up. Bringing us to point six, design for operations. This is where we make things observable. Once a solution is deployed, there are logs, traces, and insights available. There are instruments for monitoring and metrics in order to proactively identify is issues. This gets us to number seven, use managed services. That's where the real power of the cloud comes in. Avoid using infrastructure as a service, virtual machines in that case, 
and try to focus on platform as a service. This is where your business allows you to focus on a higher level of the infrastructure and leave the rest up to Microsoft. We're now at point eight, use identity as a service. Every cloud application needs a way to work with identities. So you really need to use an identity as a service, ID AAS, like Microsoft Enter ID, and definitely do not use your own system. Your own identity system is seen more as a liability than an asset. So you really want to focus on the application and not on all the intrinsic details and policies required to maintain and secure your own identity store. We're now getting to number nine, almost there. Design for evolution. All applications, they can change over time, whether it is to fix bugs, add new features or bring in new technologies. If all parts of the applications are tightly coupled, it becomes very hard to introduce changes to a system. A change in one part of the application may break another part or cause changes to ripple through the entire code base. Microservices is one popular way to handle this evolutionary design. Only part of a single service of the application will need to be updated. This brings us to the final point. Point number 10, always build for the needs of the business. Despite being the last point, it's the fundamental building block for anything, anywhere. The RPO, RTO, along with the service level agreement, service level objectives required by the business have to be defined. Based on these requirements, you can have further solution to architecture with the necessary components, including availability. After all, using resources in the cloud always comes at a cost, and these costs have to be backed up by a solid business record. Requirement. With these Azure application design principles, we have covered a lot of different areas in the public cloud. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more content on the cloud technologies. Until next time, stay curious, keep innovating and I will see you in the next video. Take care.